Well, welcome to another episode of Traveling Through History. Really glad you're here with us this evening. And we're here to talk about a very special person in our history, and that is Nikola Tesla, uh, one of the greatest scientists, maybe the greatest inventor and innovator the world has ever seen. Uh, certainly, he's in the top five, at least, and um, has an incredibly interesting history. Uh, was born in Serbia, uh, now Croatia, uh, to Serbian parents, and um, grew up as a very curious boy, and at seven years old, started uh, realizing that he was interested in mathematics, and he was interested in science. He actually saw an early demonstration of electricity over in his home country, and became fascinated with that, and thought about all the different uh, applications it could have using things like friction and currents. And so he, uh, as you can imagine, the impact he ended up having on the world later was incomparable. Uh, literally, he had 700 worldwide patents. He had 300 in the United States. He had thousands of ideas that never were patented. So you can't even imagine if some of those ideas had come to fruition, what his impact might have been. But in terms of the products that he did bring to market and bring to us as a world, um, we all use many of his products every single day. And when I say we all, I mean every single person on the planet is impacted by Nikola Tesla. Um, his AC current, which ended up replacing the DC current, which was the standard at the time, we still use on every continent and in every country of the world, even today. Uh, other inventions like the Tesla coil, which is used in all kinds of different applications, and we'll go into what some of those are. Uh, his research led to the uh, smartphone, which we have in all of our hands today, to wireless technology. Uh, it e is even used uh, by militaries around the world to do all kinds of different types of weapons, including laser sighting weapons. Uh, his advanced research into things like radio, uh, which he and Marconi, the Italian, were the pioneers of. Uh, you can imagine what uh, the radio transmission and all, all of those types of wireless transmissions have done to our lives. In the future, of course, we came to Bluetooth and other types of transmissions, but Nikola Tesla was in the middle of all of it. And uh, he improved the light bulb, he improved the way that we live our lives, the way that we communicate with each other. Uh, and virtually everything that he experimented with, uh, whether it was successful or not, had some type of impact in terms of the research on later applications in our society today. So he really is a very consequential scientist and inventor. And uh, tonight we're going to go through his early life, his early adult life, his immigration to the United States, the uh, research and work that he did uh, in the US, and then later, uh, his later years when he eventually passed away, but with a very strong legacy, as you can see, leaving a lasting uh, mark on the entire world. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, Nikola Tesla and his history. So Nikola Tesla was born into an ethnic Serb family in the village of Smiljan within the military frontier in the Austrian Empire, which is actually present day Croatia. He was born on July 10th, 1856. His father, Militon Tesla, was a priest of the Eastern Orthodox Church. His father's brother, Yosef, was a lecturer at the military academy not too far away and wrote several textbooks on mathematics. So you can see uh, early in life, Nikola had very different influences. One was coaxing him to maybe become a preacher in the church, and his brother was coaxing him into really studying of mathematics and science. Tesla's mother, Georgina, whose father was also an Eastern Orthodox church priest, had a talent for making home craft tools and mechanical appliances and the ability to memorize Serbian ethnic poems. Duca had never received a formal education. Tesla credited his memory and creative abilities to his mother's genetics and influence throughout his life. Tesla was the fourth of five children. He had three sisters and an older brother. And his older brother was actually killed in a horse riding accident when Tesla was age seven. So it was really a huge tragedy that impacted his life. In 1861, Tesla attended primary school in Smiljan, where he studied German, arithmetic, and religion. In 1862, a year later, the Tesla family moved to the nearby town of Gospik, where Tesla's father worked as a parish priest. Nikola completed primary school, followed by middle school. In 1870, 
Tesla moved to Karlovic to attend high school at the Higher Real Gymnasium, where the classes were held in German, as it was usual throughout schools within the Austro-Hungarian military frontier and empire. Later in his patent applications, before he obtained American citizenship, Tesla would identify himself as Ol Smiljan Lika border country of Austrian Hungary. Tesla later wrote that he became interested in demonstrations of electricity by his physics professor. Tesla noted that these demonstrations of this mysterious phenomenon made him want to know more about this wonderful force. Tesla was also able to perform integral calculus in his head, which prompted his teachers to believe that he was cheating all the time. He finished four-year term in three years, graduating in 1873 from high school. After graduating, Tesla returned to Smiljan, but soon contracted cholera and was bedridden for nine months and was near death multiple times. In a moment of despair, Tesla's father promised to send him to the best engineering school if he recovered from the illness. Tesla later said that he had read Mark Twain's earlier books while recovering from his illness. The next year, Tesla evaded conscription into the Austro-Hungarian army in Smiljan by running away southeast of Lika. There he explored the mountains wearing hunter's garb. Tesla said that his contact with nature made him stronger, both physically and mentally. He enrolled at the Imperial Royal Technical College in Graz in 1875 on the military frontier scholarship. Tesla passed nine exams and received a letter of commendation from the Dean of the Technical Faculty to his father who said, your son is a star of the first rank in this class. At Graz, Tesla noted his fascination with the detailed lectures on electricity presented by Professor Jacob Poschti and described how he made suggestions on improving the design of the electric motor the professor was demonstrating. But by his third year, he was failing in school and never graduated, leaving Graz in December of 1878 one biographer suggests Tesla was not studying and may have been expelled for gambling and womanizing. Tesla's family did not hear from him after he left school. There was a rumor amongst his classmates that he had drowned in the nearby river, but in January, one of them ran into Tesla in town and reported the encounter to Tesla's family. It turned out Tesla had been working there as a draftsman for 60 florins per month. In March, 1879, Mulliton finally located his son and tried to convince him to return home and take up his education in Prague. Tesla returned to Gospic later that month when he was deported for not having a residence permit. Tesla's father died the next month, April 17, 1879, at the age of 60. During the rest of the year, Tesla taught a large class of students in his old school in Gospic. In January 1880, two of Tesla's uncles put together enough money to help him leave Gospic for Prague, where he was to go study. He arrived too late to enroll in Charles Fernandin University. He had never studied Greek, a required subject, and he was illiterate in Czech, another required subject. Tesla did, however, attend lectures in philosophy at the university as an auditor, but he did not receive grades for the courses. Tesla moved to Budapest, Hungary in 1881 to work under Tivadar Puskas at the Telegraph Company. Upon arrival, Tesla realized that the company, then under construction, was not functional, so he worked as a draftsman in the central telegraph office instead. Within a few months, the Budapest telephone exchange became functional and Tesla was allocated the chief electrician position. During his employment, Tesla made many improvements to the central station equipment and claimed to have perfected a telephone repeater and amplifier, which was never patented or publicly distributed. In 1882, the next year, Tivadar Puskas got Tesla another job in Paris with the Continental Edison Company. Tesla began working in what was then a brand new industry, installing indoor incandescent lighting citywide in a large scale electric power utility. The company had several subdivisions and Tesla worked at the Société Electrique Edison, the division in the Ivy sur Seine suburb of Paris, in charge of installing the lighting systems. 
There he gained a great deal of practical experience in electrical engineering. Management took notice of his advanced knowledge in engineering and physics and soon had him designing and building improved versions of the generating dynamos and motors. He also sent him on to troubleshoot engineering problems at other Edison utilities and facilities around France and in Germany. In 1884, Edison manager Charles Batchelor, who had been overseeing the Paris installation, who was brought back to the United States to manage the Edison Machine Works, which was a manufacturing division situated in New York City, and he asked Tesla if he wanted to come to the United States as well. In June 1884, Tesla immigrated to the United States and began working almost immediately at the Machine Works on Manhattan's Lower East Side an overcrowded shop with a workforce of several hundred machinists, laborers, managing staff, and 20 field engineers struggling with the task of building the large electric utility in that city. As in Paris, Tesla was working on troubleshooting installations and improving generators. Tesla began working at the machine works for a total of six months when he quit. What event precipitated his leaving is unclear. It may have been over a bonus he did not receive either redesigning generators or arc lighting system that was shelved. Tesla had previous run-ins with Edison Company over unpaid bonuses he believed he had earned. In his autobiography, Tesla stated the manager of the Edison Machine Works offered a $50,000 bonus to design 24 different types of standard machines, but it turned out to be a practical joke. Later versions of this story have Thomas Edison himself offering and then reneging on the deal quipping Tesla, you don't understand American humor. The size of the bonus in either story has been noted as odd since Machine Works manager Bachelor was stingy with pay and the company did not have that amount of cash equal to 1.6 million in today's money. Tesla's diary contains one comment on what happened at the end of his employment. A note he scrawled across the two pages covering December 7th to January 4th saying goodbye to Edison Machine Works. Soon after leaving Edison Company, Tesla was working on patenting the arc lighting system, possibly the same one he developed at Edison. In March 1885, he met with patent attorney Lemel Serrell, the same attorney used by Edison to help attain different patents that he had obtained at the time. Serrell introduced Tesla to two businessmen, Robert Lane and Benjamin Vail agreed to finance an arc lighting manufacturing and utility company in Tesla's name called the Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing Company. Tesla worked for the rest of the year obtaining patents that included an improved DC generator, the first patents issued to Tesla in the US, and building and installing a system in Rahway, New Jersey. Tesla's new system gained notice in the technical press which commented on its advanced features. The investors showed little interest in Tesla's ideas for new types of alternating current motors and electrical transmission equipment. After the utility was up and running in 1886, they decided that the manufacturing side of the business was too competitive and opted to simply run an electric utility. They formed a new utility company, abandoning Tesla's company and leaving the inventor pen penniless at the time. Tesla even lost control of the patents he had generated. Since he had assigned them to the company in exchange for stock, he had to work at various electrical repair jobs and as a ditch digger for $2 a day. Later in life, Tesla recounted that part of 1886 as, as a time of hardship, writing, my high education in various branches of science, mechanics, and literature seemed to me like a mockery at the time. In late 1886, Tesla met Alfred S. Brown, a Western Union superintendent, and New York attorney Charles Fletcher Peck. The two men were experienced in setting up companies and promoting inventions and patents for financial gain. Based on Tesla's new ideas for electrical equipment, including the thermomagnetic motor, they agreed to back the inventor financially and handle his patents. Together, they formed the Tesla Electric Company in April 1887, with an agreement that profits from generated patents would go one-third to Tesla, one-third to Peck, and one-third to Brown. 
They set up a laboratory for Tesla at 89 Liberty Street in Manhattan, where he worked on improving and developing new types of electric motors, generators, and other devices. In 1887, Tesla developed an induction motor that ran on alternating current, or AC. The power system format that was rapidly expanding in Europe and the United States because of its advantages in long-distance high-voltage transmission. The motor used polyphase current, which generated a rotating magnetic field to turn the motor. This innovative electric motor, patented in May of 1888, was a simple self-starting design that did not need a commentator, thus avoiding sparking and high maintenance of constantly servicing and replacing mechanical brushes. Along with getting the motor patented, Peck and Brown arranged to get the motor publicized, starting with independent testing to verify it was a functional improvement, followed by press releases sent to technical publications for articles to run concurrently with the issue of the patent. Tesla had a viable AC motor and related power system, something Westinghouse needed very much. And so George Westinghouse came and approached Tesla, looking to work with him, innovate, and potentially patent a similar commutator-less rotating magnetic field-based motor. In July 1888, Brown and Peck negotiated a licensing deal with George Westinghouse for Tesla's polyphase induction motor and transformer designs for $80,000 in cash and stock. Westinghouse also hired Tesla for one year for a very large fee of $2,000 per month to be a consultant at the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company's Pittsburgh Labs. During that year, Tesla worked in Pittsburgh, helping to create an alternating current system to power the city's streetcars. He found it a frustrating period because of conflicts with the other Westinghouse engineers over how best to implement AC power. Between them, they settled on a 60-cycle AC system that Tesla proposed, but they soon found it would not work for streetcars since Tesla's induction motor would only run at a constant speed. They end up using the DC traction motor instead for that particular application. Tesla's demonstration of his induction motor and Westinghouse's subsequent licensing of the patent, both in 1888, came at a time of extreme competition between electric companies. These big firms, Westinghouse, Edison, Thomas Houston Electric Company, were all trying to grow in a capital-intensive business while financially undercutting each other. There were even a war of currents propaganda campaign going on with Edison Electric claiming their direct current system, or DC, was better and safer than the Westinghouse alternate current system, or AC. Competing in this market meant Westinghouse would not have the cash or engineering resources to develop Tesla's motor and related polyphase system right away. Two years after signing the Tesla contract, Westinghouse Electric was in trouble. The near collapse of Barings Bank in London triggered the financial panic of 1890 causing investors to call in their loans to Westinghouse Electric. The sudden cash shortage forced the company to refinance debts. The new lenders demanded that Westinghouse cut back on what looked like excessive spending on acquisition of other companies' research and patents, including the motor royalty in Tesla's contract. At that point, the Tesla induction motor had been unsuccessful and stuck in development. Westinghouse was paying 15000 a year guaranteed royalty, even though operating examples of the motor were rare. In early 1891, George Westinghouse explained his financial difficulties to Tesla, saying that if he did not meet the demands of his lenders, he would no longer be in control of the Westinghouse Electric Company, and Tesla would have to deal with the bankers to try to collect future royalties. The advantages of having Westinghouse continue to champion the motor probably seemed obvious to Tesla, and he agreed to release the company from the royalty payment contract that he had signed several years earlier. Six years later, Westinghouse purchased Tesla's patent for a lump sum payment of $216,000 as part of a patent sharing agreement signed with General Electric. The money that Tesla made from the licensing of the AC patents made him independently wealthy and gave him the time and funds to pursue his own interests. In 1889, Tesla moved out of Liberty Street shop that Peck and Brown had rented for him 
and moved into a new, very much larger workshop and laboratory space in Manhattan. Those included a lab at 175 Grand Street. Tesla had hired his own staff and conducted some of his most significant work and experiments in these workshops. In the summer of 1889, Tesla traveled to the 1889 Exposition Universale in Paris and learned Heinrich Hertz's experiments had proved the existence of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. In repeating and then expanding on these experiments, Tesla tried powering the Ruhmkopf coil with a high-speed alternator he had been developing as part of an improved arc lighting system, but found that the high-frequency current overheated the iron core and melted the insulation between the primary and secondary windings on the coil. To fix this problem, Tesla came up with his own oscillating transformer with an air gap instead of insulating material between the primary and secondary windings in the iron core. Later, called the Tesla coil, it would be used to produce high-voltage, low-current, high-frequency alternating current electricity. He would use this resonant transformer circuit in his later wireless power work throughout his career. So you can see, not only was he one of the inventors of AC power and really the one who brought it to mainstream at the time, but uh, he created the Tesla coil, which was a vast improvement over other coils before it and created a situation with the air in between the two coils where it would not overheat. It was a tremendous improvement and then ended up, of course, being applied in almost every area of electricity later on. July 30th of 1891, at age 35, Tesla became a naturalized U.S. citizen. In the same year, he patented his Tesla coil. After 1890, Tesla experimented with transmitting power by inductive and capacitive coupling using high AC voltages generated with his Tesla coil. He attempted to develop a wireless lighting system based on near-field inductive and capacitive coupling. He even uh, worked on some incandescent light bulbs from across the stage, and they actually worked. He spent most of the decade working on variations of his new form of lighting with the help of various investors, but none of the ventures succeeded in making a commercial product out of his findings. In 1893 in St. Louis, Missouri, at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, and at the National Electric Light Association, Tesla told onlookers that he was sure a system like this could eventually conduct intelligible signals or perhaps even power to any distance within the use of wires. So he was essentially for about three years there um, projecting out into the future that wireless was going to be a reality. And of course, as we know today, wireless is very much part of everything that we do. Tesla served as vice president of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers in 1892 to 1894, which was the forerunner of modern day IEEE, very famous electrical society. By the beginning of 1893, Westinghouse engineer Charles Scott and Benjamin Lame had made progress on an efficient version of Tesla's induction motor. Lame found a way to make the polyphase system much more robust and compatible with the single phase AC and DC systems. Westinghouse Electric now had a way to provide electricity to all potential customers and started branding their polyphase AC system as the Tesla polyphase system. They believed that Tesla's patents gave them patent priority over other polyphase AC systems that were being tried. Westinghouse Electric asked Tesla to participate in the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, where the company had a large space in an electrical building devoted to electrical exhibits. Westinghouse Electric won the bid to light the exposition with alternating current, or AC, and it was a key event in the history of AC power as the company demonstrated to the American public the safety, reliability, and efficiency of AC current. Uh, essentially, they were able to knock DC off of the stage at this time and make the American people realize that AC was not dangerous, it was efficient, it was cheaper, and it was reliable. And it was much better for transmitting electricity over large distances. So really, this was the uh, time in 1893 where AC started to take over from DC. Tesla visited the fair for a week during its six-month run 
to attend the International Electrical Congress and put on a series of demonstrations at the Westinghouse exhibit. A specially darkened room had been set up where Tesla showed his wireless lighting system using a demonstration he had previously performed throughout America and Europe. These included high voltage, high frequency, alternating current to light wireless gas discharge lamps. The people in attendance were absolutely amazed and spellbound by his experiments live and in person. An observer said within the room were suspended two hard rubber plates covered with tin foil. Those were about 15 feet apart and served as terminals of the wires leading from the transformers. When the current was turned on, the lamps or tubes, which had no wires connected to them, but lay on a table between the suspended plates or which might be held in hand for almost any part of the room were made luminous wirelessly. These were the same experiments and same apparatus shown by Tesla in London about two years previously. During his presentation, Tesla introduced his steam-powered reciprocating electricity generator that he had patented that year, something he thought was a better way of generating alternate current. Steam was forced into the oscillator and rushed out through a series of ports, pushing a piston up and down that was attached to the armature. The magnetic armature vibrated up and down at high speed, producing an alternating magnetic field. This induced alternating current this induced alternating electric current in the wire coils located adjacent. It did away with the complicated parts of a steam engine generator, but never caught on as a feasible engineering solution to generate electricity. In 1893, Edward Dean Adams, who headed the Niagara Falls Cataract Construction Company, sought Tesla's opinion on what a system would be best to transmit power generated by the falls and by the millions of gallons of water. Over several years, there had been a series of proposals and open competitions on how best to do it. Among the systems proposed by several US and European companies were two phase and three phase AC, high voltage DC and compressed air systems. Adams asked Tesla for information about the current state of all the competing systems. Tesla advised Adams that a two-phase system would be the most reliable and that there was a Westinghouse system to light incandescent balls using two-phase alternate current. The company awarded contract to Westinghouse Electric for building a two-phase AC generating system at Niagara Falls. Based on Tesla's advice and Westinghouse's demonstration of the Columbian Exposition, at the same time, a further contract was awarded to General Electric to build an AC distribution system. In 1895, Edward Dean Adams, impressed with what he saw when he toured Tesla's lab, agreed to help found the Nikola Tesla Company, set up to fund, develop, and market a variety of previous Tesla patents and inventions, as well as new ones. Alfred Brown signed on as well, bringing along patents developed under Peck and Brown. The board was filled out with William Birch, Rankine, and Charles F. Coney. It found few investors since the mid-1890s were a tough time financially, and the wireless lighting and oscillator patents it was set up to market never panned out. The company handled Tesla's patents for decades to come. In the early morning hours of March 13, 1895, the South Fifth Avenue building that housed Tesla's lab caught fire. It started in the basement of the building and was so intense, Tesla's fourth floor lab burned and collapsed into the second floor. The fire not only set back Tesla's ongoing projects, but it also destroyed a collection of early notes and research material and models and demonstration pieces, including many that had been exhibited at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. Tesla told the New York Times, I am in too much grief to talk. What can I say? After the fire, Tesla moved to 46 and 48 East Houston Street and rebuilt his lab on the sixth and seventh floors there. Starting in 1894, Tesla began investigating what he referred to as radiant energy of invisible kinds after he noticed damaged film in his laboratory and previous experiments. His early experiments were with crooked tubes, a cold calcified electrical discharge tube. Tesla may have inadvertently captured an X-ray image predating by a few weeks Wilhelm Röntgen's 
December 1895 announcement of the discovery of X-rays when he tried to photograph Mark Twain's illuminated glacier tube, an earlier type of gas discharge tube. The only thing captured on the image was the metal locking screw of the camera lens. In March 1896, after hearing of Ron Chen's discovery of X-ray, Tesla proceeded to do his own experiments in X-ray imaging, developing a high-energy single-terminal vacuum tube of his own design that had no target electrode and worked from output of Tesla coil only. In his research, Tesla devised several experimental setups to produce X-rays themselves. Tesla held that with his currents, the instrument will enable to generate ranch and rays of greater power than attainable with any ordinary apparatus. Tesla noted the hazards of working with his circuit and single node X-ray producing devices. In his many notes on the early investigation of this phenomenon, he attributed the skin damage to various causes. He believed only that the damage to the skin was not caused by ranch and rays, but by the ozone generated in contact with the skin to a lesser extent, by nitrous acid. Tesla incorrectly believed the X-rays were longitudinal waves, such as those produced in waves in plasmas. These plasma waves can occur in force-free magnetic fields. On July 11th, 1934, the New York Herald Tribune published an article on Tesla in which he recalled an event that occasionally took place when experimenting with his single electrode vacuum tubes a minute particle would break off a cathode, pass through the tube, and physically strike him. Tesla said he could feel a sharp stinging pain where it entered his body and again at the place where it passed out. In comparing these particles with the bits of metal projected by his electric gun, Tesla said the particles in the beam of force will travel much faster than those particles, than they travel in concentrations. So he was kind of experimenting with the early stages of lasers and some of them were actually hitting his skin and passing through. In 1898, Tesla demonstrated a boat that had a cohere-based radio control or remote control, which he dubbed teleautomation to the public during an electrical exhibition at Madison Square Garden. Tesla tried to sell his idea to the U.S. military as a type of radio-controlled torpedo, but they showed very little interest. Remote radio control remained a novelty until World War I and afterwards, when a number of countries used it in the military programs and in military advances. Tesla took the opportunity to further demonstrate teleautomatics in his address to the meeting of a commercial club in Chicago when he was traveling to Colorado Springs in May 1899. So you can see he was really the inventor and brainchild behind the remote control which, of course, we use uh, all the time in our current lives. From 1890s through 1906, Tesla spent a great deal of his time and fortune on a series of projects trying to develop the transmission of electrical power without wires or wireless technology. It was an expansion of his idea of using coils to transmit power that he had been demonstrating in wireless lighting. He saw this as not only a way to transmit large amounts of power around the world, but also as he had pointed out in his earlier lectures, a way to transmit worldwide communications from country to country. At the time Tesla was formulating his ideas, there was no feasible way to wirelessly transmit communication signals over large distances, let alone large amounts of power. Tesla had studied radio waves early on and came to the conclusion that part of the existing study in them by Hertz was incorrect, and he wanted to correct the record. Also, this new form of radiation was widely considered at the time to be short distance phenomenon and seemed to die out in less than a mile. Tesla noted that even if theories on radio waves were true, they were totally worthless for his intended purposes since this form of invisible light would diminish over a distance just like any other radiation and would travel in straight lines right out into space, becoming hopelessly lost. By the mid-1890s, Tesla was working on the idea that he might be able to conduct electricity long distance through the Earth or atmosphere. He began working on experiments to test this idea, including setting up a large resonance transformer, which was a magnifying transmitter at East Houston Street Lab. Seeming to borrow 
from a common idea at the time from the Earth's atmosphere was conductive. He proposed a system composing of balloons suspending, transmitting, and receiving electrodes in the air above 30,000 feet. To further study the conductive nature of low pressure air, Tesla set up an experimental station at high altitude in Colorado Springs during 1899. Here he could safely operate much larger coils than in the cramped offices in the New York lab. To fund his experiments, he convinced John Jacob Astor to invest $100,000 to become a majority stakeholder in the Nikola Tesla company. Astor thought he was primarily investing in the new wireless lighting system. Instead, Tesla used the money to fund his Colorado Springs experiments. Upon his arrival, he told reporters that he planned to conduct wireless telegraphy experiments, transmitting signals from Pikes Peak to Paris. So you can imagine how far that is from Colorado to Paris, and that's what he wanted to achieve. There he conducted experiments with a large coil operating in the megavolts range, producing artificial lightning and thunder, consisting of millions of volts and discharging up to 135 feet in length. At one point, it inadvertently burned out the generator in El Paso, causing a large outage. The observations he made of the electronic noise of lightning strikes led him to incorrectly conclude that he could use the entire globe of the earth to conduct electrical energy. During his time in the laboratory, Tesla observed unusual signals from his receiver, which he speculated to be communications from another planet. He mentioned them in a letter to a reporter in December 1899 and to the Red Car Society in December 1900. Reporters treated it as a sensational story and jumped to the conclusion Tesla was hearing signals from Mars. He expanded the signals when he heard in a February 9, 1901 Collier Week article entitled Talking with the Planets, where he said it had not been immediately apparent to him that he was hearing intelligently controlled signals and that the signals could have come from Mars, Venus, or other planets. Tesla had an agreement with the editor of Century Magazine to produce an article on all of his findings. The magazine sent a photographer to Colorado to photograph the work being done there. The article titled, The Problem of Increasing Human Energy, appeared in the June 1900 edition of the magazine. He explained the superiority of the wireless system he envisioned, but the article was more of a lengthy philosophical treatise than an understandable scientific description of work. Tesla made the rounds in New York trying to find investors for what he thought would be a viable system of wireless transmission by whining and dining them at the Waldorf Astoria's Palm Garden restaurant. In March 1901, he obtained 150,000 from JP Morgan in return for a 51% share of any generated wireless patents and began planning the Wardenclyffe Tower, which was a facility to be built in Shoreham, New York, 100 miles east of the city. By July 1901, Tesla had expanded his plans to build a more powerful transmitter to leap ahead of Marconi's radio-based system, which Tesla thought was a copy of his own. He approached Morgan to ask for more money to build a larger system, but Morgan refused to supply any further funds. In December 1901, Marconi successfully transmitted the letter S from England to Newfoundland. Defeating Tesla in the race to first compete in such a transmission. A month after Marconi's success, Tesla tried to get Morgan to back an even larger plan to transmit messages and power by controlling vibrations through the globe. Over the next five years, Tesla wrote more than 50 letters to Morgan, pleading for and demanding additional funding to complete the construction of Wardenclyffe. Tesla continued the project for another nine months into 1902. The tower was erected to its full height of 187 feet. In June 1902, Tesla moved his lab operations from Houston Street to Wardenclyffe Tower. Investors on Wall Street were putting their money into Marconi's system, and some in the press began turning against Tesla's project, claiming it was a hoax. The project came to a halt in 1905 and 1906 with the financial problems and other events that led to what Tesla biographer suspects was a nervous breakdown on Tesla's part. Tesla mortgaged the Wardenclyffe property to cover his debts at the Waldorf Astoria. 
he lost the property in foreclosure in 1915. In 1906, Tesla opened offices at 165 Broadway in Manhattan, trying to raise further funds by developing and marketing his patents. He went on to have offices in Metropolitan Life Tower from 1910 to 1914, and also at the Woolworth Building. On his 50th birthday in 1906, Tesla demonstrated a 200 horsepower, 16,000 RPM bladeless turbine. During 1910 to 1911 at the Waterside Power Station in New York, several of his bladeless turbine engines were tested. Tesla worked with several companies, including from 1919 to 1922 in Milwaukee. He spent most of his time trying to perfect the Tesla turbine with Hans Dahlstrand. He was the head engineer at the company, but engineering difficulties meant it was never made into a practical device. Tesla did license the idea to a precision instrument company and found its use to be, and it found use in the form of luxury car speedometers and other instruments. So pretty cool there that Tesla's original invention there of the bladeless turbine engine actually ended up creating a bunch of new applications for mainly for automobiles. When World War I broke out, the British cut the transatlantic telegraph cable linking the U.S. to Germany in order to flow the flow of information. They also tried to shut off German wireless communication to and from the U.S. by having the U.S. Marconi Company sue German radio company Telefunken. Uh, they also hired Tesla as a witness for two years for a thousand a month. The case stalled and then went moot as the U.S. entered the war against Germany in 1917. In 1915, Tesla attempted to sue the Marconi company for infringement of his wireless tuning patents. Marconi's initial radio patent had been awarded in the U.S. in 1897, but his 1900 patent submission covering improvements to radio transmission had been rejected several times before it was finally approved in 1904 on the grounds that it infringed on other existing patents, including two 1897 Tesla wireless power tuning patents. The court declared that over their decision, they had no bearing on Marconi's system as first to achieve radio transmission, just that since Marconi's claim to certain patented improvements were questionable, the company could not claim infringement on those same patents. On November 6, 1915, a Reuters news agency report from London had the 1915 Nobel Prize in Physics awarded to Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. However, on November 15th, a Reuters story from Stockholm stated the prize that year was being awarded to William Henry Bragg and to Lawrence Bragg for their services in the analysis of crystal structure by means of x-rays. These were unsubstantiated rumors at the time that either Tesla or Edison had refused the prize. The Nobel Foundation said any rumor that any person has not been given the Nobel Prize because he was made known with intention to refuse the award is ridiculous. There have been subsequent claims by Tesla biographers that Edison and Tesla were the original recipients and that neither was given the award because of their animosity towards each other, that each sought to minimize the other's achievements and the right to win the award, that both refused ever to accept the award if the other received it first, and that both rejected any possibility of sharing it. In the years after these rumors, neither Tesla nor Edison won the Nobel Peace Prize ever again. Tesla attempted to market several devices based on the production of ozone. These include a 1900 Tesla Ozone Company selling an 1896 patented device based on his Tesla coil. He also tried to develop a variation of this a few years later as a room sanitizer for hospitals. In 1928, Tesla received a patent for a biplane design capable of vertical takeoff and landing, which gradually tilted through manipulation of elevator devices in flight while it was flying like a conventional plane. The design was something Tesla thought would sell for less than $1,000. However, he ended up selling it for $250,000 a year later. Tesla lived at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City from 1900 and ran up a very large bill. He moved to the St. Regis Hotel in 1922 and followed a pattern of 
from then on moving to a different hotel every few years and leaving his bills unpaid behind. Tesla walked to the park every day to feed pigeons. He began feeding them at the window of his hotel room. He spent over $2,000 to take care of these various birds. In 1935, at his 79th birthday, Tesla covered many topics. He claimed to have discovered the cosmic ray in 1896 and invented a way to produce direct current by induction that made many claims about his mechanical oscillator. Describing the device, he told reporters that a version of his oscillator had caused an earthquake at his 46 East Houston Street lab and neighboring streets in 1898. He went on to tell reporters his oscillator could destroy the Empire State Building with five pounds of air pressure. He also proposed using his oscillators to transmit vibrations into the ground. He claimed it would work over any distance and can be used for communication or locating underground mineral deposits. In 1937, at his Grand Ballroom Hotel New Yorker event, Tesla received the Order of the White Lion from, and medal from Yugoslav Ambassador. On questions concerning the death ray, Tesla stated, but it is not an experiment. I have built, demonstrated, and used it. Only a little time will pass before I can give it to the world. In the fall of 1937, at age 81, after midnight one night, Tesla left the Hotel New Yorker to make his regular commute to the cathedral and library. While crossing a street a couple of blocks from the hotel, Tesla was struck by a moving taxi cab that was thrown to the ground. His back was severely wrenched, and three of his ribs were broken by the accident. The full extent of his injuries were never known. Tesla refused to consult a doctor an almost lifelong custom for him, and never fully recovered. On January 7th, 1943, at age 86, Tesla died alone in room 3327 of the Hotel New Yorker. His body was found by maid Alice Monaghan, and she entered Tesla's room, ignoring the do not disturb sign that Tesla had set up. Two days later, the Federal Bureau of Investigation ordered the Allen property custodian to seize Tesla's belongings. John G. Trump, a professor at MIT and well-known electrical engineer serving as a technical aide to the National Defense Research Committee, was called to, in to analyze Tesla's items. After a three-day investigation, Trump's report concluded that there was nothing that would constitute a hazard in unfriendly hands, stating his thoughts and efforts during at least the past 15 years were primarily of a speculative, philosophical, and somewhat promotional character on January 10, 1943, New York City Mayor Fiorio LaGuardia read a eulogy written by Slovene-American author Louis Artemak live on WNYC radio, where violin pieces Ave Maria and Tamo Dielko were played in the background. On January 12, 2,000 people attended a state funeral for Tesla at the Cathedral of the John Divine in Manhattan. After the funeral, Tesla's body was taken to Ferncliff Cemetery in Ardsley, New York, where was later cremated. The following day, a second service was conducted by prominent priests at the Trinity Chapel. So you see he had an incredibly impactful, fascinating life from beginning to end. Um, his ideas, whether they came to fruition or whether they didn't, uh, pushed the boundaries of science, pushed the boundaries of everything that he touched. We use uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands of different products today in our everyday lives that he invented and thought of. Uh, throughout his life. And uh, really, you can see how consequential and impactful he was in our lives. Many of the inventors at that time were also the same, uh, whether it was Edison or Westinghouse or Marconi or several of the others, but really the most brilliant of all of them from the historians who studied, the most brilliant of all was Nikola Tesla. So let's take a look at a video and we'll come back and talk about it on the other side. On the 7th of January, 1943, a maid working at the New Yorker Hotel entered room 3327, where one of their permanent residents was staying. Inside, she found the body of an 86-year-old man, who had died alone in a room he had been living in for the last nine years of his life. The man was broke, and had been living on a diet of milk and crackers, using the little resources he had left to feed and take care of the local pigeons. This man went by the name of Nikola Tesla. Seeing Tesla in his final years, it would have been hard to believe he was one of the greatest minds of the modern era. 
His genius shaped the world we know today, pioneering the alternating current, the electrical system which powers our homes around the globe. His influence can be seen all around us, from remote control and radio to wireless communication. Perhaps most impressive of all, Tesla's work and creations came out of his passion for science, with his earnings being sunk into projects aimed at the betterment of humanity, rather than for greed and profit. Tesla was born on the 10th of July 1856, in modern-day Croatia. His mother came from a line of inventors and had an incredible memory, being able to memorize the entirety of Serbian epic poems, and so she trained her son with exercises in memorization. As time went on, Tesla was known to have an eidetic memory, later speaking eight different languages, which he credited to his mother's efforts in his youth. At the age of five, Tesla witnessed the death of his older brother in a horse riding accident, the image of which would stay with him for his entire life. After this, Tesla began experiencing flashes of light and images, making it hard to separate reality from his imagination. He claimed his inventions would come to him in these flashes of light, conceptualizing their entire design in his head and correcting their flaws without ever putting pen to paper. In an interview from 1919, he described this process, stating, I do not rush into actual work. When I get an idea, I start at once building it up in my imagination. I change the construction, make improvements and operate the device in my mind. It is absolutely immaterial to me whether I run my turbine in thought or test it in my shop. Invariably, my device works as I conceived that it should, and the experiment comes out exactly as I planned it. In 20 years, there has not been a single exception. Tesla excelled in the education system, but ended up dropping out of university due to a gambling addiction and other personal issues. Inspired by electrical demonstrations by his physics professor, Tesla went and got a job with the Paris branch of the Continental Edison Company in 1882, installing indoor lighting around the city. Management soon realized that his talents were wasted on such a job, and tasked him with constructing and improving dynamos and motors. He was so insightful in his innovations that the company soon had him traveling around Europe, fixing problems at other Edison installations. In 1884, at the age of 28, Tesla's manager offered him a job at Edison Machine Works in New York City, an offer he accepted. He soon moved to America, where he would spend a majority of his life, becoming a naturalized citizen seven years later in 1891. He soon came into contact with company owner Thomas Edison, and the two initially got on, with Tesla describing Edison as an inspirational figure, and Edison stating to Tesla, I have had many hard-working assistants, but do you take the cake? This mutual admiration would not last long, however, with a lifelong rivalry soon developing. The main source of animosity between the two resulted from a disagreement about the type of current each man preferred. Edison's company owned the patents for DC, or direct current, a system where electric charge only flows in one direction. Tesla, however, was an advocate for alternating current, or AC, a system where the electric charge changes direction periodically. These changes in direction allow AC current to maintain power over longer distances, it is also possible to use devices called transformers to change the magnitude of AC voltage, allowing a current to travel at a high voltage and then be reduced to a lower voltage for safe use in homes. Tesla tried explaining the benefits of alternating current to Edison, but Edison wouldn't listen, as it could ruin the sales for direct current, to which he owned all the patents. Edison then offered Tesla a large bonus of $50,000 if he redesigned 24 of his obsolete machines. Upon completion, Edison refused to pay, and revealed that the task had been a practical joke, saying, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. Tesla resigned after six months at the company, and set out on his own. He wanted to change the world, and he knew he could. He spent the next year setting up his own company, developing his ideas on alternating current. However, his investors showed little interest and decided to take the company, including all the patents he created. He was left digging ditches in the street to survive. 
Fortunes would soon change for Tesla, however, with his ideas on an alternating current motor catching the eye of a new investor, helping establish the Tesla Electric Company in 1887. He then designed a motor which was much cheaper and easier to maintain than the ones using a direct current. He revealed his motor at the American Institute of Electrical Engineers the following year, a display that caught the attention of a businessman named George Westinghouse. Westinghouse was a major player in the electric market and needed Tesla's motor to complete his alternating current system, a system that would compete against Thomas Edison. Westinghouse bought the motor and hired Tesla as a consultant for the equivalent of $55,000 a month, along with royalties for each horsepower produced by his motors. Things for Tesla were looking good. And so began the War of the Currents. Edison started going to extreme lengths to discredit Tesla's AC system. He began paying schoolchildren 25 cents to bring him household pets, where he would set up a public stage and electrocute the animals, in an attempt to show the public that Tesla's AC system was not safe. Over time, electrocutions increased in scale, with a horse eventually being executed in public. Edison continued executing animals many years after the War of the Currents had concluded, with the Edison Film Company producing a short film in 1903 titled Electrocuting an Elephant. The film showed the electrocution of Topsy, a former circus elephant who was killed when 6,600 volts were shot through her body. Despite the negative press generated by Edison, Tesla and Westinghouse continued to develop their alternating current system. The opportunity to show that alternating current was both safe and viable for large-scale use came at the World's Columbian Exposition, hosted in Chicago in 1893. Edison had put forward an offer to light the fair, but Westinghouse underbid him, winning the contract and with it the chance to outshine Edison. While it was a struggle to provide lighting at the low cost put forward, Westinghouse and Tesla succeeded, showing the world the strength of alternating current. Their success continued, with Westinghouse Electric being chosen over Edison's company, General Electric, to construct a hydroelectric plant at Niagara Falls. Tesla drew up designs for the plant, which was a massive success, eventually powering part of New York City. Alternating current continued to grow in popularity, and became the system we all use to power our homes today, with direct current being phased out over the next decade. While Westinghouse won the War of the Currents, his company was left on the verge of bankruptcy, with $10 million of debt. He turned to Tesla for help, asking him to temporarily reduce his royalties to help him keep his company afloat. Compelled by compassion for his friend, instead of reducing his royalties, Tesla tore up his contract, eliminating them entirely. The money he gave up would be worth $300 million in today's money, but this was of little concern to Tesla, who was more interested in the pursuit of science over financial gain. This act saved Westinghouse, who would go on to buy Tesla's AC patent for $216,000 in 1897. This is equivalent to about $6 million today, money that Tesla used to set up new laboratories in New York and fully dedicate himself to invention. Tesla had become an international figure, with his laboratories frequently visited by the rich and powerful, including his close friend and father of American literature, Mark Twain. Tesla's inventions were numerous, with him amassing almost 300 patents in his career. He created an early version of neon lighting, a highly efficient bladeless turbine for automobiles, and was the pioneer in X-ray technology, being one of the first to warn of its dangers to humans. One of his most famous inventions was his renowned Tesla coil, a device capable of producing large amounts of high voltage electricity. A standout invention was a remote controlled boat displayed at Madison Square Garden in 1898. This boat was such an amazing advance in wireless technology and so ahead of its time that the audience initially thought he was using magic or telepathy to make it move. There were even claims that there was a monkey hidden inside the boat who was trained to operate it. While Tesla was an amazing inventor, he struggled to market his creations, always looking towards the next invention, rather than working out how to sell what he had already made. 
Many of his ideas went unwritten, and the ones that were noted down often went without a legal patent. This method of operating caused Tesla serious issues when he began working on radio at the end of the 19th century. He came up with the idea of radio in 1892, and was soon ready to transmit a signal to a location 50 miles away. But disaster struck, with his work being destroyed in a lab fire in 1895. Tesla had not submitted a patent application, and only did so after two years of rebuilding his research. At the same time, an Italian inventor named Marconi had also been working on radio, establishing patent rights in England, but when he tried to acquire them in the United States, he was turned down as his ideas were deemed too similar to Tesla's. Unfortunately for Tesla, Marconi was able to make the world's first transatlantic radio message in 1901, using 17 of Tesla's patents. Thomas Edison then threw his financial weight behind Marconi, with the US Patent Office suddenly changing its mind on its previous rulings. Marconi now had rights in the United States, with Edison able to take a cut of the profits. Tesla initially let the issue slide, but the last straw came when Marconi won the Nobel Prize in 1911 for his development of radio, something which was only possible due to Tesla's uncredited work. Tesla tried to sue Marconi, but the cases dragged on for years, only being resolved in Tesla's favour eight months after his death. Tesla's most radical idea came about at the turn of the 20th century. He aimed to create a world wireless system, which would be capable of dispersing energy to anywhere in the world. Tesla received funding for this project in 1901, and soon purchased land on Long Island, New York, where he would construct his device. Over the next year, a great wooden tower was constructed, standing 187 feet tall, with a metal dome 68 feet in diameter. He named the facility Wardenclyffe Tower, and believed it would radically advance wireless technology, with what he called communication devices, the likes of which would not be seen for another century. A telephone subscriber here may call up and talk to any other subscriber on the globe. An inexpensive receiver, not bigger than a watch, will enable him to listen anywhere, on land or sea, to a speech delivered or music played in some other place, however distant. In the same manner, any picture, character, drawing or print can be transferred from one to another place. Millions of such instruments can be operated, from but one plant of this kind. The tower also had other applications, including universal and accurate timekeeping, global music distribution, and a marine system which would allow ships to determine their exact location, and steer perfectly without the need for a compass. Despite his amazing ideas, Tesla soon suffered many setbacks. Marconi's 1901 radio broadcast had drawn attention away from Wardenclyffe Tower, with the media beginning to think of the project as a hoax. The investors Tesla had been able to gather soon realised that there was no way to regulate and therefore profit from the energy produced by the tower. This led many investors to back out, leaving Tesla, who was now in his 50s, in financial ruin. Tesla struggled on for over a decade, trying to complete his plans in vain. He then had a nervous breakdown, and his debt reached so high he lost Wardenclyffe to foreclosure in 1915. The land soon passed to another owner who destroyed the tower to make space for real estate. Tesla was now bankrupt, and his mental health started to significantly decline. He began living in a string of hotels, and started caring for pigeons, taking time every day to feed and care for them. In his late 70s, he ended up at the New Yorker Hotel, where he would stay for the rest of his life. This was largely thanks to the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company, who saw the dire conditions he was in and decided to pay his rent, as a way to thank him for saving them all those years ago. Tesla went on to live until the age of 86, dying in his hotel room on the 7th of January, 1943. Nikola Tesla was a man ahead of his time. His advancements in electricity were radical, helping to usher in the modern age, with his influence seen in anything from x-rays to remote control. His world wireless system had the potential to advance technology by nearly a century, while also providing free energy to the globe. Unlike so many of his era, Tesla did not work for financial gain, 
instead working to advance humanity. Perhaps it is not surprising that a man so far ahead of his time has only found his place in the 21st century, an age shaped by his technological brilliance. So you can see from that video, there's so many things to talk about. First one being that uh, when Tesla came to the United States to work for the Edison company, uh, this was his big break to come to the United States to try to eventually become a U.S. citizen and be able to work with a reputable company, he thought, uh, on his research and to get paid to do so and to help them uh, advance science and advance the devices that were in his mind. As you saw, though, within those first six months, Thomas Edison actually uh, mistreated him very badly, did not pay him the bonus that he thought he deserved for doing the improvements that he did. And because of that, um, he uh, ended up resigning from the Edison company and actually Edison stole several of his patents along the way. So uh, as you can see, Thomas Edison was not a scrupulous man, uh, not somebody who was very honorable. But uh, Tesla uh, instead went out, struck out on his own, started his own company, started doing experiments in a very small lab in New York. Uh, and started trying to build his reputation separately from Edison. Uh, as you saw, he caught the eye of um, Westinghouse, who was another big player in the um, electrical business at the time and was a direct competitor to Edison. And so um, not only did Tesla enjoy uh, the process of being recruited by Westinghouse, but he liked the idea of you know, the compete against Edison, who of course he thought wronged him very badly. And so he went to work for Westinghouse. And as you saw, Westinghouse believed very strongly in the AC current, which is what Tesla was trying to bring to the world. And of course, is what we use today. Uh, and of course, uh, Edison did not want the AC current because he had patented on the DC currents and wanted to stay there because that's where he made his profits. And so Westinghouse took advantage of this situation. And as you saw, parlayed the AC current into all kinds of different projects and applications uh, they did very, very well with it for a long time until the company started to fall on hard times. And uh, when it did, actually, really, the whole economy was struggling at the time uh, in the United States and really globally. So for Westinghouse's company to survive, uh, Westinghouse came to Tesla and asked him directly, uh, he essentially gave him a choice. He said, we can either back off all of your um, contracted uh, royalties that we're giving you or... Uh, we're going to be going under, and you're not going to have a job anyway. So what do you want to do? And essentially, Tesla did uh, the incredible, and that was he tore up this contract that was very lucrative for him for many years while he worked for Westinghouse. And that saved the company, allowed the company to continue to operate, and he stayed with Westinghouse for a number more years beyond that. And uh, as you can see and as you heard in the video, Tesla clearly was not about profit. He was about science unlike Edison, who was all about profit and was much less about science. So, um, of course, in some ways, that was his undoing throughout his life. And one of the reasons he died uh, poor, because he, even though there were times in his life that he was very wealthy, um, the money was not important to him. The only thing that mattered was the inventions, the science, the innovation, the bringing the new applications to the people. So a uh, very interesting life, as you can see, um, the impacts that he made on science and on our world and on wireless and on electricity, remote control, x-rays, radio, and everything else that we talked about uh, are really kind of unspeakable at this time. We're still grappling with how far ahead Tesla was. As the video uh, proposed, he might have been as much as 100 years ahead of his time on a lot of these technologies. So just think about that uh, when you consider the impact of Tesla and his uh, scientific discoveries and experiments and uh, creations. So let's go ahead and talk about the 25 interesting facts about Nikola Tesla. Number one, Nikola Tesla had a photographic memory. Tesla is arguably one of the most influential engineers of today's modern technology. Many of his ideas were so advanced for his time that many people thought his concepts were ridiculous and too crazy. But even so, Tesla pursued his career and continued to prove them wrong. Tesla was able to do calculus in his head by the time he was 17, which led his teachers to think he was cheating and often accused him. He finished high school one year early. You can see a great picture there on the top right of what he looked like uh, as a high school senior. And then on the top left is one of the more famous uh, pictures he took when he was a young inventor in New York City. 
Number two, Tesla started imagining applications of alternating current electricity very early. Training for an engineering career, he attended the Technical University at Graz, Austria, and the University of Prague. At Graz, he first saw the Gram Dynamo, which operated as a generator and, when reversed, became an electric motor. And he conceived a way of using alternating current to his advantage. Later, at Budapest, he visualized the principle of the rotating magnetic field and developed plans for an induction motor that would become the first step towards the successful utilization of alternating current. In 1882, Tesla went to work in Paris for the Continental Edison Company. And while on assignment to Strasbourg in 1883, he constructed after work hours, his first induction motor. You see a picture there of um, Paris on the left, which is where he had his first real job at the Edison Company. And then a, a great picture there on the bottom uh, of Tesla meeting some young scientists. Number three, Nikola Tesla worked all the time as was his passion. Tesla says he never slept more than two hours a night, but he did doze off now and then in order to recharge. On one occasion, he worked for 84 straight hours without resting. Every day, Tesla worked from 9 a.m. in the morning until 6 p.m. at night, seven days a week. And he always had dinner at exactly 8, 10 p.m. at the same restaurant every night. He would phone in his dinner order to the same waiter, who was also the one to serve him the food. He usually ate alone, although sometimes there were rare exceptions. He had a guest. Afterward, he would continue working, usually until 3 a.m. in the morning. So you can imagine somebody who is so passionate about what he's doing, so passionate about his experiments and his science and his incredible inventions, that he would work seven days a week. And this is partly why he had the 300 U.S. patents and the 700 global patents and the thousands of applications and ideas that weren't even patented throughout his life. Number four, Tesla had a lot of patents, but never won the Nobel Prize. And we mentioned this both in the video and also the lead up. Tesla had 700 total global patents with about 300 patents in the United States, although many of his inventions were never patented. So he might have had thousands of them if he had pursued them all with patent lawyers. He never won the Nobel Peace Prize, although there probably never was a scientist more deserving who impacted more lives than Nikola Tesla. You can see some of his incredible inventions there on the left and some of the original drawings he did for various types of induction engines and turbines and his Tesla coil and all the different things that he did. And you can see some of his practical applications of the Tesla coil. Some great uh, photos there in the middle and on the right. Number five, Nikola Tesla was a self-made man. When Tesla made the move to New York City from Europe, he arrived with only four cents in his pocket. While working for Thomas Edison's company, he was asked to improve a generator design for a large bonus. Upon completion, Edison stole the design and never paid Tesla. And as you saw that in the video, Tesla quit shortly after and formed his own company, which was called the Tesla Electric Company in 1887 with investor Alfred Brown. Tesla's first New York lab caught on fire and burned to the ground which set back his projects at the time about two years and ruined a lot of his early works. And you can see one of his uh, great inventions there in the middle was the uh, glow bulb. Number six, Tesla's inventions had a huge impact on our lives today. We mentioned this and talked about this in the video. Among his inventions were remote control, wireless telegraphy, neon lamps, the Tesla coil, which was the modern wireless technology is based on, because of his discoveries with wireless technology, it provided the basis for the invention of smartphones, which we use today, of course. You see some of the great pictures there on the bottom left, his tower in the middle, and then his Tesla coil on the right. Number seven, Tesla had a few trusted friends. Tesla and Mark Twain were good friends. Tesla took a photo of Twain, which was one of the first photos ever lit by phosphorant light. Nicola never had any relationships because he didn't want to distract from his work. He also believed that women were superior to men. Once Tesla invited Twain to witness one of his experiments where he was to demonstrate his high-frequency oscillator. 
Mark Twain was known for his constipation and was instructed by Tesla to stand on the platform underneath the oscillator. After a minute and a half, Twain left the platform in search of the restroom. So pretty wild that during this experiment, it uh, solved his uh, constipation that he experienced. You can see some great pictures there of uh, Twain and Tesla up on the top right and a caricature of there of Tesla and Twain together. And then a picture of Twain actually working with one of his neon lights. Number eight, Nikola Tesla's highest impact inventions involved alternating current or AC electricity and rotating magnetic fields. See some great pictures there on the top left and in the middle of what some of his AC current uh, devices looked like. Tesla was known by many as the genius who lit the world. Tesla's star story, Tesla's story is one of both creativity and innovation. Creative in the sense that some of his inventions include alternative current electricity and the discovery of the rotating magnetic field. There's a reason why Tesla famously won against Thomas Edison in the current wars. The AC system that Tesla established with Westinghouse costs a lot cheaper than Edison's direct current system. Tesla proved that AC efficiently transmitted power and could provide power at much larger distances. It also works best on transformers while DC does not. Edison was against AC power because he owned the patents on DC power and dominated the electricity market at the time. So you can see he thought Tesla and Westinghouse and this design was a direct threat to his profits. Number nine, he almost triggered an earthquake in Manhattan, and you heard a little bit about that in the video. He famously sent vibrations across East Houston Street in Manhattan. This usually occurred when he experimented on his electromechanical oscillator. A time came when the oscillator resonated the frequency of the whole building and then the whole block. The whole moment almost triggered an earthquake in New York. Nearly starting a catastrophic event only proves what a genius Tesla was. People were contacting police from all over the city to report the tremors that they felt. You see a picture there on the left of the design of this incredible oscillator that he was using in his lab. Number 10, Tesla pioneered radio communication before Marconi did. Fans of Italian inventor Marconi loathe different Nikola Tesla facts. This stems from the fact that Tesla invented the radio first. Back then, Marconi became famous for inventing radio and radio communication. His invention also helped locate the survivors of the Titanic. Almost more than a century passed before people learned the truth. Tesla demonstrated short-range radio communication before inventor Marconi broadcasted the first transatlantic radio signal. Both inventors sparked controversies for establishing similar inventions centered on power. Marconi usually shined more than Tesla because of his fortune. Tesla only gained fame with his original ideas. Meanwhile, Marconi used his money to achieve what Tesla couldn't. After so many years, the United States Supreme Court finally decided to invalidate most of Marconi's key patents in honor of Tesla's earlier work. You see a picture there on the left of Tesla working with his radio invention that was transmitting radio signals. And then on the bottom right there is a picture of Marconi with his device. Number 11, neither Nikola Tesla nor Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. So that's kind of an interesting myth that everyone thinks Edison invented it. Some people believe that Edison stole Nikola Tesla's rights after inventing the first light bulb. However, that rumor is false. British chemists Warren De La Rue and Joseph Swan came up with different ideas that produced the first light bulbs. De La Rue used thin fragments to delay the burnout of the bulb. Meanwhile, Swan found a way to improve De La Rue's design by using commercially viable carbon. Afterward, Thomas Edison combined the ideas of the two chemists to resolve the challenges of the light bulb design. Because of this, Edison received acclaim as the inventor of the light bulb. He achieved this feat, even if it wasn't his original idea. And there were many things also that Tesla did around the light bulb and around lighting that uh, obviously took the uh, original idea to a different level. Number 12, he joined forces with George Westinghouse to compete against Edison. You see a great picture there of Tesla with Westinghouse and the uh, picture of the current war down on the bottom there between Edison and Tesla. 
one of the most critical Nikola Tesla facts center on the inventor's partnership with George Westinghouse. They allied after Tesla left Edison's company. Tesla came up with an impressive AC system that fascinated Westinghouse. At that time, the American businessman aimed to supply the nation with long distance power. In 1888, he bought some of Tesla's patents. He paid the inventor in cash and stocks from the Westinghouse Corporation. The success of their partnership made direct competitors of Thomas Edison. Edison strived to promote his DC system. He bid against Tesla and Westinghouse in lighting up the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Much to Edison's chagrin, the Westinghouse Corporation won against the Continental Edison Company and Tesla became an international superstar scientist. So this really was this partnership with Westinghouse and the exposition in Chicago is what put Tesla on the map with his AC power. It was pretty incredible to see. He went from kind of obscure scientist to world-renowned scientist almost overnight. Number 13, Nikola Tesla visualized his inventions in 3D. You heard a little bit about this in the video about how he would, even before he put anything on paper or put any kind of device together in the lab, he would spend a lot of time thinking about his inventions and visualizing them and going over them in his head before he would do anything. He didn't create sketches of inventions like most inventors. Instead, Tesla visualized how his work would turn out. His parents came up with ways to train the young Tesla's mind to reach its full potential. Because of this, Tesla gained the ability to have a photographic memory. He then cultivated his mind to visualize images of his inventions in 3D. An example of this unique technique found in the fiction in Sherlock Holmes' Mind Palace. It's a really interesting read. Tesla would envision an invention and then ponder it for days and sometimes weeks before before putting anything on paper and starting to build a new device. You see a picture there of an electrical mind that would be envisioned by Tesla. And uh, another picture, a rendering there by an artist of Tesla and what he must have done when he was thinking about his inventions. Number 14, JP Morgan financed Tesla's famous Wardenclyffe Tower. And we mentioned this in the lead up and also in the video itself. As mentioned, one of the most Known Nikola Tesla facts is that he lacked money. He needed someone rich to sponsor the inventions he hoped to achieve. He especially wanted to be the first person to send messages across the Atlantic Ocean. To accomplish this, Tesla enlisted the help of J.P. Morgan. Using Morgan's money, Tesla built Wardenclyffe Tower. Unbeknownst to his financier, Tesla's ultimate goal with the 186-foot tower revolved around the wireless transmission of electricity wanted to produce and distribute free electricity. Tesla eventually revealed his grandiose plan when he needed more funding from Morgan. Unfortunately, the secret forced Morgan to pull out of Tesla's project. You can see some great pictures there of the Wardenclyffe Tower when it was completed and also a design of what it was supposed to look like and how it was supposed to transmit messages and electricity from tower to tower. Number 15, Tesla's intense experiments caused blackouts and electrocuted butterflies. During his stay in Colorado Springs, Tesla's intense research went overboard almost all of the time. While there, he built one of the biggest Tesla coils. This large oscillator formed massive artificial lightning bolts. They spread out in the surrounding area, electrocuting butterflies and causing citywide blackouts. Plus, no one managed to replicate Tesla's production of artificial lightning during this time. So pretty incredible. His uh, devices had gotten so large, he was creating essentially artificial lightning bolts. Pretty incredible. Number 16, Tesla's inventions paved the way for our modern world. Nikola Tesla's work is still useful to this day. He also sparked the idea of smartphones and the wireless internet. Tesla's main goal centered on wireless transmissions. Because of this, he came up with the idea of building handheld devices to wirelessly communicate with other people. This eventually led to the production of smartphones and other devices that we frequently use today. And you can see back in 1926, and this is uh, about 80 years before cell phones were created. This is how he described this technology. When wireless is perfectly applied to the whole earth, it will be converted into a huge brain, which in fact it is. 
all things being particles of real and rhythmic whole. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles. And the instruments through which we shall be able to do so, all of this will fit in the vest of our pockets. So just think about a brain like this guy had that he was talking this way in 1926. And nobody else could even imagine what it would look like. A pretty incredible stuff that he was envisioning what we're doing 100 years later. Number 17, Elon Musk admires Thomas Edison more than Nikola Tesla, which is kind of surprising if you think about it. Famous entrepreneur and engineer Elon Musk revealed that he doesn't like Nikola Tesla. In an interview, Musk stated that he admired Thomas Edison, Tesla's rival, more than the Serbian-American inventor, although he admits Tesla was a brilliant ideas guy. He applauded Edison's dedication to gaining profit for his work, unlike Tesla, who was always broke and couldn't convert his inventions into profit. Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening founded Tesla Motors back in 2003 and named the company after the world's greatest inventor, Nikola Tesla. Musk didn't change the name when he took over as CEO and chief shareholder of the company. Bottom line, Tesla was a scientist. Edison was a salesman. The AC induction motor is used in Tesla electric cars today, which is why the company is named for him. So pretty interesting that uh, they named the company for him and uh, Elon Musk kept it named for him and admired him as an ideas guy, but he really admired uh, Edison more because he was able to market and profit off of his ideas. Number 18, some random facts about Tesla. Tesla's first job was as a drafter at an engineering firm in Slovenia. Tesla spoke eight languages, Serbian, English, Czech, German, French, Hungarian, Italian, and Latin. In addition to studying both math and physics at the Technical University of Graz, Tesla also studied philosophy at the University of Prague. Tesla claims the idea of AC currents came to him in a vision. He claimed that he invented a death ray called the Teleforce. Many states in the U.S. celebrate July 10th, which is Tesla's birthday. They call it Nikola Tesla Day. The voice amplifier for the telephone receiver was Tesla's first invention, which he was patented in 1881. And there's a picture of it there on the bottom left. Uh, among several of his other inventions, there's a picture of the telephone receiver. And you can see a great statue of Tesla. And there's several of those on different continents now, as so many people admire him. Number 19, Nikola Tesla harnessed the power of Niagara Falls, and you heard this in the video. The first hydroelectric power plant in the U.S. installed at Niagara Falls was designed by Tesla. The electrical current from the hydroelectric power plant was used to power the city of Buffalo, New York. This achievement made the use of alternating current, or AC, quite famous throughout the world and put it on the map. This type of power plant is still being used today all over the world at large bodies of water. You can see a uh, statue of Tesla there at the site in Niagara Falls. In the middle is a plaque that's there at Niagara Falls talking about this incredible invention in 1899 by Tesla and by the Western House Corporation. And then there's an actual picture of it on the uh, middle right of what that plant looked like harnessing the power of Niagara Falls for electricity. Number 20, Nikola Tesla advanced X-ray technology. You also heard about this in the video. Tesla was a pioneer of X-ray technology. He experimented with radiation and managed to take some of the first X-ray images of the human body, which he called shadow graphs. Tesla was also one of the first scientists to hypothesize that X-rays could be harmful. But this is another area of research where he rarely gets credit. According to one 2008 academic article published in Radiographics, Every radiologist is aware of Nikola Tesla's research in the field of electromagnetism. But if the discovery of x-rays is mentioned, only a few radiologists associated with Tesla's name. Tesla contributed to medicine in other ways as well. The unit of energy named after Tesla is used to measure the strength of the magnets in MRI systems. So that's pretty fascinating. He had an impact on the medical industry as well. You can see his first two x-rays ever taken were by Tesla. The first one's there of a man's boot 
and you can see his actual foot and his bones inside the boot. And then a picture of a hand, a left hand on the uh, x-ray graph, again, which he called shadow graphs. Number 21, he was born during a lightning storm and had a great sense of humor. Nikola Tesla was born around midnight between July 9th and July 10th, 1856, during a fierce lightning storm. According to family legend, midway through the birth, the midwife wrung her hands and declared the lightning a bad omen. This child will be a child of darkness, she said, to which his mother said, no, he will be a child of light. Most people don't know that Tesla had a terrific sense of humor and in his writings would often leave twisted and sarcastic quips for people to find later when they read them. So you see an artist rendering of Tesla when he was aboard there on the left and his fascination with science. And then uh, a great epic picture of Tesla much later in life in his 60s when he was experimenting with the radio. Number 22, pearls drove him crazy and he was a dapper dresser. Tesla could not stand the sight of pearls to the extent that he refused to speak to women wearing them. When his secretary wore pearl jewelry, he sent her home for the day. No one knows why he had such an aversion, but Tesla had a very particular sense of style and aesthetics. Carlson said and believed that in order to be successful, one needed to look successful. He wore white gloves to dinner every night and prided himself on being a dapper dresser. Every photograph of Tesla, he said, is very carefully constructed to capture his good side. And you can see a picture of the uh, pearls there on the bottom left that he couldn't stand and wouldn't talk to anybody who was wearing them. And then a couple of uh, pictures of him in his most dapper suits. Number 23, his work was more important than love. Tesla mentioned he loved a girl in his younger age, however, felt relationship to be an obstacle in his research so he chose celibacy. He was never seen in a romantic relationship with a woman, but he did have several female friends. He loved to walk alone so he could think about his inventions and problem solve. In time, it became an obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, for him. Tesla has claimed he had visions made of intense flashes of light that explained to him how he would build his inventions. People who knew him well described him as eccentric. You can only imagine someone who was this brilliant and had this kind of mind that he definitely would be eccentric and had a lot of strange habits. And uh, to think about uh, these flashes of light in his mind, it must have been really interesting being inside his brain. Number 24, Tesla had controversial beliefs. He firmly believed in alien species and that we are not alone in the universe. He spoke often of trying to invent an identifying technology to be able to detect alien life forces. He started to work on experiments with a flying machine in 1910, more correctly, an anti-gravity flying machine. He was an avid numerologist and he was obsessed by the number three and had to circle around a building three times before entering it. He also believed that factors of three were the secret code to unlock the universe. When he stayed at a hotel, he would only stay in a room with a three in the number. Tesla loved nature and was an environmentalist. He cared about Earth's resources being depleted by humans so much that it is one of the reasons he tried to make our civilization fueled by electricity, was to reserve and preserve all the resources. Superstition, belief, and mind for technology obviously go hand in hand. You see a picture there on the bottom left of three and six and nine, which are all factors of three, which he felt was the uh, secret code of the universe was that number and everything factored by that number. Number 25, Nikola Tesla has inspired books, movies, and TV shows over the years. Several movies have highlighted Nikola Tesla's life and famous works like The Secret of Nikola Tesla, a 1980 biographical film starring Orson Welles as J.P. Morgan. Nikola Tesla, The Genius Who Lit the World, a 1994 documentary produced by the Tesla Memorial Society and Nikola Tesla Museum in Belgrade, Serbia. The Prestige, which was a 2006 fictional film about two magicians directed by Christopher Nolan with rock star David Bowie portraying Tesla. And you can see a picture there in right center, David Bowie playing Tesla in that particular movie. So those three movies on the right side there, and then you can see a lot of really fantastic books about Nikola Tesla and his life and his impact on our world, all the incredible things he did in his life.
really fascinating person and would highly recommend you check some of these books and these movies out because they uh, really explain his life and his genius quite a bit. Famous quotes from Nikola Tesla. I do not think there any thrill that can go through a human heart like that felt by an inventor as he sees some creation of the brain unfolding to success. And you can imagine this was his passion. So that really was how he felt, was there's nothing more thrilling. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomenon, it will make more progress in one decade than all the previous centuries of its existence. I don't care that they stole my idea. I care that they don't have any of their own. Peace can only come as a natural consequence of universal enlightenment. Here's another one on the bottom left. The gift of mental power comes from God, divine being. And if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we become in tune with this great power. Be alone. That is the secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. So that's really what he believed. And as you heard in the video and in my uh, lead up, the program, he would walk around New York City alone for hours at a time, just thinking about new inventions. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. The present is theirs. The future for which I really worked is mine. If your hate could be turned into electricity, it would light up the whole world. And then final one on the bottom right, the scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Pretty interesting. He thought a lot about not just science and the way that he did invention, but he thought a lot about the ways that he thought. And he was giving advice to people about ways to think creatively and to be able to come up with invention. Hopefully you enjoyed that about Nikola Tesla, one of the great scientists and great minds uh, in human history, uh, and the impacts that he's had on our society today. As we said uh, throughout the program, he was about 100 and maybe more years ahead of his time uh, and had tremendous, tremendous impact. Uh, the tragedy of his life, of course, is that he came up with all these great inventions and often people would steal them from him and take his patents or buy them for cheap. And uh, of course, he ended up broke at the end of his life. But uh, in terms of his ideas and his patents and his creations and his inventions, uh, no one has impacted us more across the board in our regular day lives and things that we do on a regular basis. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and you learned a lot through the 25 interesting facts. You learned a lot through the video and that you want to dig a little bit more into Nikola Tesla, his life, his creations, his inventions and, uh, and the impact that he had in our society. Uh, thank you so much for joining tonight. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of great content coming your way. And uh, again, we hope you love history as much as we do. Have a great evening.